global military spending is on the rise. That means more and better equipped soldiers on land, more warships at sea, and more high-tech fighter jets in the skies. In 2018, worldwide military spending hit $1.8 trillion. It has reached the highest point since us at CIPRI has started compiling world data over the last 30-something years. So what does all this mean? Does more military spending make the world safer? Or is it a warning of conflict to come? The last time spending rivaled today's levels was at the height of President Reagan's Cold War arms buildup in the late 1980s. But the sudden collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 changed the game. Military spending soon plummeted, large-scale military conflicts virtually disappeared, for the most part at least, and the global economy boomed. By 1998, global spending hit its lowest point since the Cold War. But then... There is a major incident in Lower Manhattan. Apparently, a plane has crashed into one of the upper floors of the World Trade Center. The September 11th attacks in 2001 prompted a massive U.S. military mobilization for President Bush's war on terror. Our enemy is a radical network of terrorists and every government that supports them. As the U.S. and its allies deployed troops to Afghanistan and Iraq, global spending numbers swell into Obama's first term when war fatigue, internal budget pressures, and troop withdrawals pushed spending back down again. So if it wasn't Iraq and Afghanistan that propelled military spending to record levels in 2018, what was it? During all of this, a tectonic geopolitical shift was taking place in East Asia, the rise of China. In 1990, the US, the Soviet Union, then Germany, France, the UK, and so on made up the top 10 military spenders. But fast forward to 2018, and those top spenders have drastically changed. China has jumped from a share of just 2% to 14%, the second largest behind the US. The country's explosive economic growth allowed it to increase spending for 24 straight years, culminating in a 2018 budget of $250 billion. So where's all that money going? To modernize China's People's Liberation Army. President Xi Jinping hopes to fully modernize the military by 2035 and complete training into a world-class force by 2049. They want to assert themselves as a regional superpower, but also as a world superpower competing with U.S. on a military basis. Progress has been swift. Since just 2011, China has gone from having zero commissioned aircraft carriers to two in operation and a third under construction. The U.S., in comparison, has 11 much more massive and highly advanced carriers. The Chinese are fielding elite fighter jets as well, like the J-20 Chengdu and the Shenyang FC-31. Together, these fighters are designed to compete with America's latest generation stealth F-22 Raptor and F-35. U.S. officials claim the Chinese used hack F-35 plans to help build these next generation aircraft. And that leads us to cyber warfare. China is spending big there too. China doesn't only want to hack into U.S. computer networks, it wants to find a way to neutralize U.S. advantages on the physical battlefield. China has been watching how the United States has conducted military operations very closely for the last 25 years. They understand how dependent we are on information-enabled technology and they have been developing asymmetric capabilities to deny us those key enabling technologies. China's also spending money to update its nuclear arsenal and the bombers and submarines that carry those weapons of mass destruction. Then, there's hypersonic missiles. They travel more than five times the speed of sound, making them difficult to detect and neutralize. And if that wasn't enough, these cutting-edge weapons also come tipped with nuclear warheads. Another really significant area is China's development of anti-satellite weapons. You know, space is critical to just about everything we do with regards to military operations or reconnaissance, 